I was just about to get on and do a video and the geese were going off their crackers, which they never do. So I just raced outside and there's a snake in their coop and they just had baby goslings. So I scared the, <laughs> the snake out, hopefully secured their, um, their coop at least for tonight until I can get out tomorrow and fully snake proof it um, and left the bathroom window open so at least if they do go off their crackers during the night I can hear it but this kind of proves exactly why I was getting on to do a video in the first place it's my 47th birthday today and we just got back from a weekend away really nice weekend away however I went down this particular weekend because a friend was available on this particular weekend and I planned the whole trip pretty much around her because if it was me and I wasn't going to be seeing her then I would have gone down during the week a lot less traffic a lot less people would have been a much nicer trip uh, when we went to the beach and the cafes would have been open the actual cafe that I wanted to go to was closed because it was a Sunday whereas it's open Monday to Friday all of these factors and she cancelled on me on Friday I think it was so the day that we left or the day before I think maybe Thursday or Friday she cancelled on me and I just I looked at that and it like it really just dropped right down into my heart and I think I said this on my other video which was it dropped right down into my heart that here I am creating something based on when someone else is available as opposed to saying this is when we're going down if you can come it'd be great to see you and then planning the trip out around what I wanted, around the dates that I wanted to go, around where I wanted to stay, around, around what I wanted, as opposed to creating a weekend away or some time away around somebody else. And this is what I've done. And I remember I would plan things like a party and I would send an invite out to everybody and say, hey, I'm having a party. And then my next line is, now tell me when you're available so I know when I can book it. Meaning, when is the weekend that the most people are available so I can book it that weekend? As opposed to going, this is the weekend it's on. If you can't come, then so be it. You miss out. And then just having a great time with whoever turned up. I never did that. I always did it the other way. I always did it based on, oh, excuse me. I always did it based on who was available, who, who were the most people available. And if I have a look back, it's, I can see it's because I did not value myself. I did not believe that I was worth these people prioritizing me and what I was doing over something else that they were doing and I just assumed that they would be busy and instead of going oh well well then I just won't have a party okay or I will go okay well I'll have a party but it'll just be me <laughs> that's okay I'm gonna have a good time all by myself um, instead of doing that I planned it around people which is insane in, in and of itself so I, I realized that <coughs> I realized that I cannot do the next 47 years of my life the same way that I've done the last 47 years. I cannot live like a victim. I cannot do it anymore. It's just it's destroying every part of my soul. I, yeah, it just destroys every part of my soul. I wake up and 
I feel like I just I feel like a victim I feel like a victim and it's crazy I should not wake up feeling like I am a victim to my reality and a victim into my life and a victim to my past and every time I talk to someone and meet someone new it's always my past story oh this is I'm a single mom and this is my reality and this is why it's my reality and they go oh yeah yeah oh that's so sad and it's always it's always my past that is the creator of my reality And so my future can never be anything other than what it is if my past is the creator of my reality. It's just not, it's just not possible. I can't remember where I was. I had to stop um, for a minute. (sighs) I know I was talking about being 47 and I know I was talking about having having this feeling of victim run my life I'm realizing that I do not want to do the next 47 years the same way I've done the last 47 years I was talking to someone today about how I hear people so much and I hear it in myself give a story when there's a reason behind why they cannot do something and it's usually a story from their past and I do it too, 100% guilty, live through my victim, I live through my victim, I live through that part of me that is so anchored into the past and all the things that have gone wrong and I said today that it was funny because I thought my sibling was holding on to things from when I was 12 because they still did not talk to me even at 47, assuming that I had let it all go without realising that I've been holding on to everything that happened from that moment in time when my life completely changed. I've been holding on to that moment. I've been living my life through that moment in time. I've made so many decisions based on that moment in time. And I've had patterns and sabotages and stories that have all been created based on that moment in time. And if I let it, then it's going to destroy the next 30 to 40 years of my life. It will make me sick. It will make me broke. It will put me on a pension. It will land me in a home or in a hospital or something if I keep going down this victim path. I used to have this drive this ability to achieve whatever I want to achieve. I used to have this deep, deep drive and I just don't know if I have it anymore, but I have to have it because here I am. I'm a mum with chickens and guinea fowl and geese. I'm outside at 11.30 at night with a rake whacking a snake trying to get it out of the goose pen (laughs) somebody with drive and tenacity and resilience does not do that they look at the snake and they go sorry geese you're fucked (laughs) I was not going to sacrifice my geese for my story the geese were more important and I guess that's kind of what it comes down to really what's more important And I think up until now, my story has been, unless there's some emergency, my story has been more important than everything else. And I don't like it. It's not going to get me 
living where we want to live. My daughter and I, we went away, when we went away for this weekend, we went somewhere that I thought we might actually really enjoy living. And I was right. We loved it. Loved it. Loved the location. Loved the size of the block. Loved where it was. Loved the view. Loved how close it was to everything. It's also $3.8 million. <clears throat> Tad more than what I would want to spend on a block of land. But it gave me an idea that this is where I want to be. But while I keep putting my story and making my story more important than me, making my story more important than my daughter, nothing's going to change. Nothing's going to change while I keep making my story more important. So I'm hoping by doing these videos I'll realise that I am more important. She is more important. Us enjoying our life is more important than my story. And I did something this weekend that I did not think I could do, which was drive that far. It was just over a two and a half hour drive, two hours, 40 minutes drive down and back. And I did not think I could do it. And I did it and I'm okay. And my story about being tired came up. So we didn't do anything much while we were there. We saw friends while we were there, but that was it. All our spare time was spent back at the property with me resting because I didn't want to use up any energy and not be able to drive back home again. And even she said it on the way home. She said, Mom, we didn't do anything really. She said, yeah, we saw them, but we didn't do anything. We didn't go anywhere. I didn't play in any new parks. I didn't meet any new friends. Like I didn't do anything. And it made me realize that my story was dictating. Again, my story was dictating. And I'm tired of my story dictating my life. My mum is dead. My dad is dead. My sibling doesn't give a shit about me. There's no one to hold on to the story for. I don't... There's no one I owe anything to. I'm not obligated to anyone anymore because they're all gone. They're all dead. There's no obligation anymore. It's cancelled the day they died. And I guess enough is enough. At some point I have to, no one else is going to do this for me. There is no, <sighs> there is no knight on a horse coming to save me. He's not coming. And I either do it. Or I don't. I either create the kind of life that I want or I don't. Yeah, 
think that's pretty much it. I know I don't want to live here anymore. And I want to move to somewhere where we both feel safer. I also know that that safety comes from me feeling safer inside. So it has to be a balance. I cannot move to another property and assume it's going to make me feel safe. Not if I do not do, not unless I do the work to create that safety. And then we will move to a property that feels safe because I have done the work to create that safety and that property is the one that we feel safe in. As opposed to me moving us, not doing any work at all, moving us to another place probably won't create any feeling of safety because I haven't actually created that feeling of safety. <sighs> so I guess that's where I'm heading. <laughs>